Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I'd like to uh, call to order our special council uh, meeting of uh, Tuesday, February 18th, uh, 222 order. Uh, this is a special council meeting uh, with the sole topic of our uh, 2000 and, um, uh, 2020 to 24 uh, financial plan. And uh, I'd like to first give a uh, territorial acknowledgement that uh, we are holding this evening's meeting on the traditional territory of the Osage people. And I'd ask for a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. So we do have our, uh, our normal public participation period uh, this evening. Uh, oh, sorry, we do have a public participation period this evening. However, we would ask um, members of the public uh, or others to speak uh, to any items in our financial plan uh, this evening. So I'll call for a first time for anyone wishing to come forward to uh, make comments to Council. Calling for a second time. Please come forward. Good evening. If you can just, Jeannie. Yeah. I did that last time too. So my name is Janine Morris, technically a resident of North Saanich, but I do have a business um, in Sydney on Third Street. And uh, this evening I am here just to say a few more words on behalf of the uh, Shaw Center for the Salish Sea, um, of which I am the president and treasurer. And I've just got with me here the executive director, who Pauline Finn. So again, we just wanted to say a few words. So good evening. Um, so on behalf of our society, I just wanted to take this opportunity to further address the five-year funding request that we previously made. So we do know that each one of you understands the vital importance of longer-term planning um, because you did request that we compile the 10-year budget projection, which we previously presented to you um, and you're now well familiar with. We feel so much stronger upon the completion of this work uh, which has facilitated the beginning of a cultural shift within our center. So with this 10-year plan in place, combined with the prospect of secured longer-term funding from the town, we have been able to broaden our focus away from maintaining the status quo to expanding our reach and presence, not just within the town of Sydney, but well beyond. And as discussed at the recent budget presentation, we now have a range of meaningful metrics in place that you have approved and we are on track to achieve our financial plan for our current fiscal year. So our center is on its way to securing a prosperous future and that is fundamentally due in large part to the additional multi-year funding that the town has already so graciously provided us with. However, for us to be able to ensure the momentum that we've created continues, it's imperative that we have the appropriate level of financial security. So without your committed support over the next five years, it will be very difficult for us to meet the ambitious targets that we've set for ourselves and the consequences could very well be dire. We feel strongly that a lack of continued five-year funding from the town would result in the following consequences. Uh, we would be unable to confidently prepare our five-year strategic plan and capital investment plan to help us realize our current vision for the future. Capital improvements would be kept to a minimum and we could very easily find ourselves falling back on the significant progress that we've made this past year in this area. Both recession and succession planning, which are vital to the success of our center, as you pointed out a few weeks ago, would be very difficult as the ability to do both of these things so strongly hinges on having adequate ta time and financial resources to demonstrate a longer term commitment to our staff. It will prove increasingly challenging to keep our current exhibits fresh as well as attract new high quality exhibits and prevent our center from going stagnant if we can't con count on longer term multi-year funding. Ensuring our systems and procedures are adequately documented would become extremely onerous <clears throat> yet is another vital component of ensuring the long term success of our center that also heavily depends on available time and resources. We've long planned to hire a team member to focus on marketing 
an area that has been vastly lacking in our past, despite it being so key to increasing our reach and attracting additional feet through the door. Our center competes in a crowded tourism market and we need the commitment of a professional marketer to play our best advantage. However, a lack of adequate long-term funding will make it significantly harder to secure such a commitment. Lastly, the vast amount of time and effort that goes into preparing for this type of significant funding request is not something that can feasibly be done on an annual basis without taking substantial focus away from all of the other vital components that are necessary to successfully manage our centre. So for each of these reasons and more, your continual long-term support is vital to our centre. Without it, we will inevitably be forced back into survival mode and be condemned once again with struggling to simply maintain the status quo. We know that you understand this as underscored by your request that we prepare the 10-year budget plan for your review and we're now seeking support for just over half of this time frame. We recognize that what we're asking from the town does reflect a very serious commitment to our centre and we know as previously mentioned that there are many competing interests on the funding available to support organizations like ours. That said, at the request of Council, we have demonstrated that the town's annual investment of $205,000 in our centre creates a significant and recurring economic return to the estimated range of about $7 million annually, if you want to use those metrics, as well as contributing in so many ways to the vibrancy of our community. So after much consideration, we just felt very strongly that it was important to come before you once again to be sure that we have clearly explained just how critical the longer term funding commitment is to our future because it takes a lot of support from partners like you to achieve our mission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I'll call for a third and final time if there's others wishing to address uh, Council this evening. And seeing none, I'll uh, bring public participation to a close. Thank you. We'll now, now move to uh, item five, our financial plan. Uh, and we have a presentation uh, prior to our budget deliberations for our CFO, Mr. Hissick. Mr. Hissick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll give you the backside warning again here <laughs> if you want to reposition. This is the third time we're meeting about the, the financial plan. So, um, I'm not going to repeat everything I told you last time. I'll just set the stage for tonight's deliberations. So what I'd like to do tonight is a brief recap of where we stand, talk a little bit about the changes proposed in the staff report that's on the agenda. And uh, following the introduction, I propose that we move into the consideration of the budget by the different areas. We've already approved water and sewer at the last meeting. We still have to do capital, especially the tax funded capital, as well as supplemental items, and then open it up if you have any further changes you'd like to make. And following the opening introduction, any changes should be made by resolution of council so that it's captured properly in the minutes and uh, we have a clear indication of council's decisions on each budget area. As mentioned, we're at the third stage. We introduced it just uh, over four weeks ago. We had our first uh, deliberations two weeks ago, and tonight we hope to finalize the budget. But if for whatever reason you feel more time is necessary, we can schedule additional meetings as required. As a quick reminder, we started out with a draft budget increase of 2.9% uh, tax impact. And there's a staff report on your agenda that if all the recommendations are followed, it would reduce that impact to 1.96%. And some of what I'm gonna show you in, th in the in introduction assumes that those will be approved and um, other materials, not quite. 
And to remind you again, each 1% increase costs the average household about $1.27 a month. So 1.96% would equate to about $30 for the year or $2.50 a month for the average household. Roughly the price of a tall Starbucks coffee or maybe a, a large double-double, I'm not sure. A lot of people wonder where our budget items come from, and it's really from a variety of sources. It's council requests. We hear what you, uh, what you talk about throughout the year. You make various resolutions throughout the year to bring back items for budget consideration, and sometimes it's just a discussion on different topics that lead us to believe that uh, budget items are required to support that. There's also community, community requests that come in either at this podium in the form of letters or through the dialogue you have all year with your constituents. We hear about budget requests all year. It's not just a two, uh, you know, six, six week period at this time of year. It's an ongoing thing. In addition to that, we have the best judgment of your trained experienced professionals who average roughly 20 years per in terms of local government experience. So, we bring forward items that are meant to maintain what we have, to make a purchase or to reduce ongoing operating costs to keep our service levels maintained, and sometimes to add new features or, or amenities that we feel would enhance our community. Granted, some of the items are nice to have, uh, but the de definition of what's nice to have versus must have is different for everybody. What some people think as maybe frivolous is vitally important to others, so we have to bring them all forward with equal weight. We don't bring forward anything that we believe is frivolous unless, well, perhaps asked to do so. In terms of the significant impacts going in, we, uh, we started out with an additional 112,000 for tax-funded capital. With the um, reductions in your, in your staff report, it brings it down to um, a slight reduction from last year, if all are approved. Reserve contributions are going up over 80,000 in, in the general fund. Supplemental requests have a net impact of 153,000, and this is new services or um, internal or external requests for funding. Debt servicing has actually decreased from last year's budget for reasons discussed previously. Uh, additional 36,000 for building and grounds maintenance at the new CSB and 29,000 for our CMP contract. We, we saw this last time briefly, but it, it's important to reiterate just how far community support has come in the last six years. We've gone up roughly half a million dollars in the last six years in terms of supporting Mary Winspear, the Shaw Center, the museum, economic development, and many other initiatives. So right now it represents roughly 8% of our net operating budget. Leasing costs, it tends to go up every year. It's a rather modest increase this year, but you'll <coughs> notice here that um, from 2009 through 2017, it's a gradual increase. And then I got a little bit smarter and I started building in expected savings into the budget. So that's why you see it's, there's a bit of a leveling off. But what that leveling off means is that we're not gonna gener generate the savings that we typically would have in previous years by fully budgeting for uh, the contract costs. That and it's a nice bit of color to, you know, liven things up. So you're familiar with this slide, but this has been revised, assuming that the 1.96 were to be approved. So it's showing that um, we'd only need an um, additional 233,000 in taxes uh, <coughs> that are um, allocated to existing taxpayers, or 1.96%, or $30 a year for the average. <coughs> It's important to uh, remind you that 
even though residential properties make up 87% of the tax base, they, they only pay about 71% of the taxes annually with um, the commercial class taking up a, you know, a larger share, roughly um, 2.9 to one. So the graph on the left, the chart on the left shows uh, the percentage of our tax base that's made up of the residential class and the one on the right shows the corresponding percentage in taxes paid. So there is a bit of a, a disconnect there. So this shows the taxes paid by a property valued at 500,000 for both a residential property and a commercial property. You'll notice that the commercial property valued at that same 500,000 pays roughly three times what the residential property does. And even though um, you see the chart trending downwards over the last four years, that's really a reflection of the rise in assessed values, not so much taxes going down. So as the um, assessed values rise, uh, we lower our, our tax rates, therefore you see that kind of decrease on this slide. And uh, who gets the tax dollars that we um, allocate? Well, for a residential property, roughly 53% of that stays within the municipality. The remainder goes to other jurisdictions. For a commercial property, less than half stays with us, with uh, the majority of, of it leaving for um, the province for school taxes or to other jurisdictions. And the importance of this is to illustrate that we have far less impact on um, a commercial property with our decisions because less of those dollars remain with us. And therefore, um, you know, we only impact roughly about half their tax bill. We saw this last time as well, a five-year projection of tax increases, but I've added a second line with a revised increase of 1.96, just to show the impact it has not just on this year, but on future years as well. If we have a smaller increase this year, it's likely gonna mean a higher one for next year. So we went from 2.98 to 1.96 for this year, but for 2021, we're projecting from 2.55 up to 3.39. Obviously, it's just a planning figure at this point, and we'll have a chance to review again next year. It's just really to, il to illustrate that any reduction this year could just mean higher increases in future and we might just be kicking it along to future generations. I've also recast this particular slide to show what a 10.1, I mean, uh, a 1.96% increase would do to our increases over the last five years in relation to inflation. So we're much closer, we're pretty much dead on over the last five years in terms of Cumulative, cumulative inflation being 10%, and if we were to stick at the 1.96, our tax increase over that same time span would be about the same. And you already know how I feel about this artificial barrier of, uh, of CPI as an increase uh, for taxes. So what do we lose by limiting our tax increase to inflation? We slowly erode our ability to provide the expected level of services. And, you know, it comes down to fiscal responsibility, where some people think that means being frugal, while others think it means allocating the right amount of resources to the services we're supposed to provide in the near and the long term. And in 2013, there was a community survey that we, we hope to be uh, renewing next year that indicated that most people would, the average person would be willing to pay the same or a little bit more to make sure that their level of service was not eroded. So over the recent past, we've been able to add services without increasing our taxes well above inflation. And how, how we've achieved that is growth in the tax base as well as operational efficiencies, but those are limited. There's only so much we can do internally. Once again, we're allocating 350,000 of surplus to balance the budget before applying the tax increase, and this helps to keep the, the increase to a bare minimum. We expect to generate enough operational savings throughout the year that we won't need to dip into those, into that surplus. 
And once all of their funding is considered, we're down to property taxes. And as a reminder, the, um, the tax rates will be impacted by the change in assessment. Uh, this year, however, the average residential property is pretty much uh, flat with a, an increase of less than 1% for the average. Whereas business, the average business property went up by a greater percentage, which means that even with us doing nothing, the multiple will decrease. And another reminder that whatever tax increase we settle on is applied evenly across the board to every class of properties. The same for residential, commercial, industrial, and um, utility. That's about all we have. So in terms of reductions to our draft budget, uh, we can point to two main areas. One is capital projects funded by general taxation, which is not a very high amount, and the supplemental items, which are um, unapproved service level requests. And why not the operating budget? As discussed before, it's because of that 350000 in surplus. Uh, we're already kind of expecting some savings there, some reductions, so you don't have to do it. We've already done that for you. A number of changes are identified in the staff report. There are two capital projects that we propose be canceled, one being the event tent and chairs, the other the thermoplastic crosswalks. There's another one that we propose to essentially cut in half, the uh, scissor lift for um, public works and parks. There's one supplemental item that we think could be canceled, that being the seagull deterrence. Because we're further along in our 2019 year-end process, we've been able to identify additional savings in last year's operating budget. And rather than letting those fall to general surplus, we have set them aside and we'd like to bring them forward to fund some capital projects. So there are savings on the RCMP side that we're putting aside because we know there are capital projects over the next five years that have to be addressed. So basically by doing this, we won't be applying any ta current tax funding to any RCMP capital over the next three years at least. Uh, finally, there's one addition. that there's, There was some um, discomfort with the funding for the CM Harbor initiative. Uh, and rather than using the um, $10,000 earmarked for um, Roberts Bay, we propose funding it from taxation instead. The net reduction in taxes for all these proposed changes is 122,000, which is what brings it down from 2.98 to 1.96. In terms of tax funding for capital, we started out at 317. We're potentially down to 190 now, which is a little bit lower than last year and still much lower than our traditional levels. We seem to have a new normal of two to 300,000, which is two to 300 less than we used to allocate annually. This is a revised list of tax funded capital. And should we choose to um, try and look even deeper, we could refer back to these pages and uh, have a go at them. But we believe that everything here is supportable. Uh, just a quick word on uh, projects, capital projects funded from both the amenity and the land sale reserve. And just as a reminder, these are funding sources that are there to potentially fund extraordinary items that don't have any other funding source. Uh, things that if it wasn't for these, call them bonus reserve amounts, if you will, um, they'd have to be either funded from, from borrowing or canceled altogether. So from the amenity reserve, we're looking at the various underground wiring projects as well as, the, as two of the uh, public washroom projects. On the land sale reserve fund, because we did so well on the sale of the um, fire hall and, and public parking lot site, um, we set aside two million of those proceeds while still keeping the borrowing well within um, projected ranges. We set aside two million for other capital items that we knew were coming. Uh, 
900,000 has already been allocated to the Ray Creek Dam project, which had originally called for borrowing as a funding source. Now we don't have to do that. And for things like the H Street sidewalk, ext sidewalk extension, um, that wasn't really on the radar a year ago, but now it is. And there is no funding source for it, so we're proposing this one. In terms of the supplemental requests, um, the key ones are the OCP review and an additional 45,000 plus amounts carried forward from last year. Shaw Center, 80,000 incremental funding, which as you know, has already been approved for this year, but they're asking for confirmation of future years. Civic site analysis, transfer to ferry reserve and the museum a funding increase of 20,000 per year. The total um, impact for this year, after all the one-time items from last year have been removed is 153,000, and there are additional impacts for years two to five, but just to um, assure council, those future impacts have already been built into the projected tax increases for future years, should those items be approved. So there's a few items that will need special consideration tonight. Uh, the SIP funding request has not yet been dealt with. All the supplemental items, uh, the tax funded capital, uh, we're looking for a resolution on the gas tax, land sale, and amenity reserve funded capital, and then um, the operating and capital budgets as amended. And before we get into the different sections, I believe our CAO would like to add a few words. Thanks, Andrew, and uh, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. So this is, a, this is actually a bit unique. Uh, I don't know if in the past uh, you've had an opportunity to, to hear from the Chief Administrative Officer with respect to uh, the proposed financial plan, but uh, um, I do intend to make my comments uh, brief. I don't have any uh, fancy red bar charts or pie charts, but uh, uh, I do intend on keeping it uh, brief. But I do uh, think it's important that council hears from the, uh, the CAO uh, before it makes its final decision with respect to uh, uh, its deliberations here this evening. So again, I just have a, a few comments. Um, let me start off by saying that uh, um, having reviewed the budget, um, I believe that, uh, that the financial plan that's being proposed here this evening by Mr. Hissick and uh, the Town of Sydney senior management team is indeed a solid one. Uh, the budget process has been undertaken in a manner that's involved significant input at multi multiple stages throughout the process um, uh, by the, uh, the senior management uh, team. So each department has been involved in this, uh, in this process. It's also worth noting that the budget is, is very much predicated upon what staff have heard directly from council throughout the year. And um, it's important to note that the budget deliberations really aren't a sort of a, a three, three sort of day process. Uh, it does happen and evolve throughout the year. So it, uh, we hear from council with respect to your, to your uh, council resolutions. In the fall, we go through a strategic planning process and we get to hear again what council deems to be its important project priorities, and this is reflected in the adopted strategic plan. And we also hear uh, from the community itself with respect to uh, uh, opportunities for and com community engagement that take place throughout the year. Um, in my view, this budget very much represents one that will allow council and the town to proceed with uh, maintaining its core service operations while also completing a significant number of uh, strategic priorities and capital projects throughout the year. I also want to say that, again, from my perspective, uh, this council, and this is, a, this is a positive thing, this council is probably one of the most informed councils uh, with respect to budget information than I think almost any previous council has been in, uh, in the past. Um, and this is part, in part uh, due to the level of due diligence that this council displays, 
with respect to its desire to be informed, whether that's uh, uh, asking questions and following up on, uh, on questions. It's also a result of the work of management staff, in particular Mr. Hissick and uh, the, uh, the senior management staff with respect to being able to provide effective and efficient uh, information at various stages throughout the process. So um, I'm going to close, but uh, and I realize that this, uh, this may be a bit premature because I know that uh, some very important deliberations and decisions are still yet to be made. Uh, but I want to take advantage of the opportunity to thank and congratulate uh, members of council on the challenging work and uh, impending budget decisions that you'll be making either this evening or potentially, uh, if necessary, I guess, in a, in a subsequent uh, uh, evening. I also want to thank the members of the public that have participated uh, in this process as well. Uh, so some of them are here this evening and uh, they've, uh, they've gotten up and they've spoke during public participation and provide their, their views and perspectives. Uh, finally, I, I do want to thank uh, Mr. Hissick and uh, the entire management team for their level of diligence and professionalism in undertaking this process and for preparing the budget as presented to Council here this evening. And that concludes my statements, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Humble. We appreciate uh, those comments. Have at her. <laughs> Mr. Hissick. Where would you like to go? What I'd, what I'd propose is, uh, might you have a slide of the um, second page of your, uh, of your report uh, with regards to the changes in the financial plan uh, contained in the report and um, they are all capital items. It's essentially that. Okay, so what I'd like to do, just for, for council's awareness and, and staff, and is, is I'd like to proceed through, uh, through these proposed changes in the most recent report. I'd then like to move to the remainder of the uh, supplemental requests as it has a section in our budget binder. Uh, and then go through the um, uh, either the operating budget, general operating budget, uh, or the general capital budget, um, and um, approve those as we go through. So um, we we do have the uh, either, either on the slide there, or you do have it in the sheet before you. We have uh, two projects proposed to eliminate uh, eliminate two capital projects, uh, one to reduce a capital project, uh, alternate funding for several. Uh, projects eliminating a supplemental item and adding tax funding uh, for one supplemental item. Does this council, um, uh, <clears throat> we could have a motion to, uh, to approve all of these and then if we want to uh, move an exception or an amendment withdrawing one for discussion we could do that. Council Wainwright. Why don't we have a motion for all of them and then we can, I, I'm certain we're going to have some discussion on one or more and we could certainly amend. Okay, so I'll move all the changes that are in the uh, staff recommendation. Second. All that stuff. Uh, Councilor Wayne. Okay, so um, the one that I'm not willing to cut yet that I'd like to leave on the table is actually the event tent and chairs. And, um, uh, the other items that are on this list, well, some of them are clearly no-brainers. Um, the scissor glove staff are saying they can buy these one for 10,000. It's going to do the job and okay, that's really a no-brainer. The thermoplastic crosswalks on Sydney Avenue, there's so much construction going on this year that it does not make sense to put them in this year. And that's why that would be cut. That's a no-brainer. Um, alternative funding for capital projects, that's still doing the project, just not um, you know, using different funding so it's not taxes, that's a no-brainer. The Seagull deterrent one is one we could talk about, but I'm okay leaving that one in as a cut. And the Seam Harbor management funding it out of taxes rather than that all base errors um, makes sense. But as as the slide showed, um, 
if we cut a lot this year, then next year the increase is greater. And that makes me um, in thinking about middle ground. Because if we leave in roughly 10,000 for event attendance shares this year, we get something useful. And next year, if we have the 10,000 item we need, and I'm sure we will, it won't be a tax increase to do it because the 10,000 is already in the budget. If we cut it, um, we don't get the benefit of having the 10 shares, and we make things a little bit harder. So that's kind of what's going through my thinking. Um, if these are the only cuts we approve, I might be willing to see the tent get cut too, but I have some other things I'd rather suggest instead of seeing the tent cut. So that's really my rationale. Okay, thank, thank you for those comments. Why don't we, uh, the council, uh, speak to uh, the first item event, tents and chairs, and then we can proceed to, uh, to others. Uh, Councillor Duncan and Councillor Garnett. I'd like to keep the event tents and chairs as well. Staff have brought this forward twice. It's a fairly small item. Um, and I think just given the number of events we do and the image we've tried to build with that, that this is a, a fairly small um, item that, that adds something, and then it will be used. So I'm okay with keeping it. Uh, Councillor Garnett and Councillor Powell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I also was revisiting this and, and thinking it's probably a good idea to keep it um, essentially based on the demographic of our community and how important it is to have chairs to sit and to for coverage of sunny days and I think we are going to have more and more community events and I think it, it would probably save us money in the long run to have our own than having to rent them so I, I'd approve keeping it in there. Councillor Pellet. And along the same lines I think um, we are a uh, festival event party town and I think it just fits with what we do. I saw the great success of the chairs in Beacon Park, and I think this is just an extension thereof. Um, I think it just goes with who we are, so I would like to keep it in this budget. Councillor Rintoul and Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I concur with the comments with respect to uh, Sydney as an event destination, and, and so uh, I, I think I could probably show some latitude here to move the, the process forward. I am fearful that there's a hidden cost to owning event tents and chairs, and that means staff handling them, staff storing them, uh, putting them up, putting them down. Right now, I'm fairly confident the majority of these events either rent tents and chairs as a part of their program or borrow them from the Mary Winspear Center, as uh, was noted previously by Mr. Robinson. Uh, there's likely some staff time associated with that in that particular case. That's my concern uh, with the item. However, uh, the suggestion was that it be pulled and could possibly uh, be revisited if we don't find those funds elsewhere. So uh, I will support uh, pulling those and vote in favor of eliminating the other uh, items on this list. Thank you. Councillor O'Keefe. Um, so I'm, um, I'm fine to let the event tent and chairs go. Um, my recollection is this this, there wasn't uh, a big hue and cry from community groups saying that we have to have this, that this is having an adverse of effect on their um, events. So it is a nice to have. All of the events that have taken place have, have gone through all right. Uh, as Councillor Rintoul mentioned, people go and they rent, they rent them. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't sound to me like it's a really critical thing and it's already being managed. And so my biggest concern is uh, similar to Councillor uh, Rintoul, is that once we have them, that uh, the added <coughs> expense or time on the part of staff to be managing them. So with the number of, of events we have, uh, now that they know that we have these things, so think of all the events we have and the amount of staff time that's gonna be required to manage um, distributing those, setting them up, um, a, a lot of that stuff takes place on weekend, so staff overtime, so that would be a bit of a concern for me. Um, I think I might be more inclined to support it if there was going to be some sort of cost attached to cover the cost of staff time to, to put those things up. Otherwise, I would probably uh, 
be inclined not to support that. If I could speak, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Councillor. If I could speak to a first time before going to second time speakers. Uh, a question through to staff. Well, we closed the street uh, 23 or 24 times uh, last year uh, for events, uh, a great variety of events. Would we see, and, and, that, and that each time we hold those events because of street closures, uh, the town staff are already out uh, doing barricades, uh, doing additional uh, garbage uh, uh, service. Do we see the primary use of these tents and, and chairs for those uh, street closure events or other events as well? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wainwright and then Councillor uh, Fellett, just before we speak, I, if um, uh, given what I've heard amongst councillors, uh, um, if somebody would like to propose an amendment. Uh, That's what I was going to do. Councillor Wainwright. So I'd move that uh, the motion be amended to uh, eliminate the um, uh, deletion of the event tent and chairs. Second. Second. Any, any further discussion? Call the question. Those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. One opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Are there uh, uh, council members wishing to speak to other items in that um, in that list? Uh, Councillor Pellet. Yes. Um, seagull deterrence. Um, I really think uh, we need to to do this. Uh, we've had complaints, and I myself have seen the. <coughs> the result of seagulls sitting on the light poles and it's in our downtown core. I think it goes towards the conversation uh, regarding the event tears and chairs, uh, tents and chairs, tent and chairs. We, our image is important to us. And I think um, seagull poop on the sidewalks, if there's a way to reduce the amount of seagull poop, then I think it's a cost that we have to bear. So I would like to see that be in our budget. Thank you. If I might uh, ask a question through staff, would we see um, uh, those deterrents uh, primarily uh, installed in the downtown core or elsewhere? Um, to the mayor, uh, yes, it would be in the downtown core and it's only on the town owned light poles. It wouldn't be for any of the BC hydro pools. If I, uh, thank you. Um, my comment is that um, having operated a business for, for some 20 years downtown and seen ample uh, seagulls and, um, and what they do, um, if you move them from a light pole, they're going to go to the building next door uh, sort of thing. So I'm, I'm not really in favor of, of, um, of, of trying to do this. I don't think it's going to result in less seagull poop. If, if these are installed downtown, it's, it's just going to be on more on the side of a building or, or, uh, or on the sidewalk. Uh, those are my comments. Uh, Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, um, <coughs> similar comments. I think, it, as staff said, if it's just going to be on town-owned uh, street lights, um, there's other poles close by. Um, so I don't think that it uh, might not have the desired effect. So I'd be in favor of taking it out. Or leaving it in. To be amended, <laughs> Councilor Wainwright. Uh, what I was going to say is that um, we should be starting this off with a m motion to amend the motion that's currently on the floor. Because if there is no seconder, we don't need to have a debate of I don't support this cut. So, does somebody want to make the motion? I'll make the motion that uh, seagull deterrence be part of the budget for the 2021 or 2020. Do we have a second? Second. Further discussion? I'll call the question. Those in favor? Those opposed? Uh, four opposed. The motion is defeated. Do we have other comments on, uh, on these uh, capital changes, on this particular list of capital changes? 
So we have the main motion to approve these changes. We have made one amendment with regards to event tent and chairs. Any further discussion on the main motion? I'll call the question, all those in favor? Opposed? We have one opposed, the motion carries. So if I might suggest now, if we turn to page uh, 14 in our budget binders, it does have uh, our pages of uh, supplemental requests. Um, those supplemental requests include uh, the uh, uh, Shaw Center for the Salish Sea, uh, the Sydney Museum and Archives, uh, SIP, and others. And um, if we would like to start with, uh, with one of them, I might suggest um, the Shaw Center for the Salish Sea. <coughs> So again, uh, speaking to Peter Wainwright's uh, good point, uh, if we would have a motion with regards to the request, and uh, if we have a seconder, then we can uh, debate and amend as necessary. I'll move the request be approved. Second. Uh, discussion? Uh, Councillor Garnett. Jump on the Shaw Center. Right? Shaw Center for the Sailor Sea. Um, I have a, a couple of comments. Um, I'm not a hundred. I'm, I'm having difficulty with it because it's a lot of money over five years. Um, I'm also having difficulty with it because, and I think it puts some of the burden on the next council from a decision we made. I know that happens, but I I, I struggle with it. Um, and I, I I understand the rationale for what you're asking, um, but I'd be more. I'd, I'd like to go in two, a two-year increment. I know that's not what you want, but I just, for me, it puts me in more of a comfort zone given the large quantity of money we're asking for here. So I just, I'll leave it for other people to have comments, but that's just kind of the, the thoughts I've been having. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, um, like uh, Councillor Garnett, I have reservations about approving for five years um, for for a number of reasons so the the Shaw Center is has been um, in place for 10 years and in that last in in that 10 years this is the third time that they've come to council asking for additional funding so as we heard in the presentation um, they started out they realized they didn't have enough to operate so they came to council and said we need this money to continue to to operate and so Council complied and, and gave um, increased the funding at that time. And then I think it was two or three later, they came back again and said, we need more funding again. And uh, they put a plan together um, that I presume they thought was gonna be sustainable and, and it wasn't. And so this is the third time they came back to council a couple years ago. And at that time, uh, council wanted to see a number of things, the engineering report, other so sorts of reports, as we know. And um, while I'm, I'm happy that significant progress has been made, especially in terms of the engineering report, and that there's a 10-year plan in place, those things, I don't feel, would, wouldn't have been done unless council had imposed that on the center. And so while I have a, a lot of confidence in the, the current board that's there, and, and the staff as well. Um, I also note that, you know, in the 10 year plan, they're still going to be short every year. And so I guess I'm concerned about, we heard comments in public participation in terms of, yes, you know, there's a turnaround here, but I feel like, you know, I've had reservations about the projections for revenue and attendance. And even with those optimistic um, projections, there's still going to be a shortfall every year. And we also heard a, a comment through public participation about having a plan that was able to, to deal with those unforeseen circumstances. So coronavirus is have, maybe going to have an impact on the tourism and, and who knows what's going to happen. But in, in a business situation, you never know what that thing is going to be. But you know there's going to be something, and so you have to plan for that. 
So I guess before, I, I, I think it's good that there's been progress made, but we've only seen that in the last six months. So I'm, I'm cautious about the investment for taxpayers having this been the third time a request has come to council. I would prefer to see uh, at least another year, maybe two, um, to make sure that indeed this time it's going to be sustainable before we commit taxpayers to such a long-term in, uh, investment. Thank That's you. Uh, Councillor uh, Wainwright and Councillor Winslow. So um, I appreciate the comments that my colleagues have made and the concerns about s sustainability and, and making decisions for future councils. The thing I have, um, I, I just don't think that two years is, is long enough for their, um, for their planning cycle. And the reason I say that, if they seriously think, you know, if they develop a plan that has a real possibility in two years time of having their funding cut, then, you know, they, their plan is going to be um, based on that assumption that they may have to scale back. Whereas if they had the assurance that they're going to have stable funding for their five year period, the plan will be different because there is no possibility that in two years they have to adjust to some kind of cut, if you see what I mean. And because we're talking a fairly significant amount of money, th that does have a significant effect on their planning. Um, previously, they had a certain money, a certain amount of money they were kind of holding in reserve, and it was the amount of money it was going to take to do an orderly shutdown, put the animals back in the wild, and so on. And and their planning, you know. Uh, reflected the fact that they had that kind of uncertainty of, of future. So I guess what I'm, being there, done that, um, clearly there were some issues. We asked them to do a bunch of planning, due diligence stuff, they did it, we considered it. Um, now we have the opportunity to let them move forward in a positive way and implement this kind of stuff, or we can say to them, no, we're not going to give you the the security of the long-term funding that you need. Adjust your plan for the possibility that we're going to cut you in a couple of years. And I don't think that is going to be to our collective interest. I think we should uh, suck it up and give them a reasonable chance. And a future council will have to deal with did they perform and will we renew this or is it time for them to close the doors? Because that's really what it's going to come down to. So I, I think if you're, I, I think we should give them a fair chance and then at the end of that five year period, somebody has a serious evaluation of it. And it'll be the council of the day, but that's what the council of the day is for. And if they run for election, it's because they know they're going to be making decisions like that. I, I don't have a problem with that. But I, I think that if we, um, if we don't give them a reasonable amount of security, their plans are going to have to adjust to the fact that we're not willing to give them that kind of security. It, it'll be a, a different set of plans than they've presented. Okay, we'll go to Councillor Rintoul and then uh, we'll go to other first time speakers before second time speakers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I'll concur with Councillor Wainwright with respect to providing the, the, the type of uh, financial security uh, for the center uh, to continue and uh, to grow and meet uh, some of the challenges that are there that, that Councillor Keith pointed out. Um, I see this, uh, yeah, it's a lot of money, it, clearly. Uh, I see it as an investment in the community. Um, I see that economic spin-off that was referenced to $7 million as, as um, being something that, that we shouldn't lose sight of. Uh, this, is, um, this is an attraction uh, that brings people into Sydney, and we need to recognize 
that it's attracting visitors uh, by its existence. It won't be here if the staff don't have uh, faith that uh, they're in a, a stable place of employment. And I want the long-term staff and the volunteers to recognize that the town is very supportive and, and can, has continued its commitment uh, to the center. I have confidence in, in the composition of, uh, of their management team and, and the, the board who are in place uh, to help deliver on, on what they've said um, they're, they're going to do. But we have to give them the, the latitude to be able to deliver. And I think that's what this is about at five-year funding is giving them that stability to succeed because even with that level of funding, it's not without its ongoing challenges. And the center will need a strong team like it has in place today to meet those challenges. So I'm supportive of the funding request of five years. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. We'll move to Councillor Fallot and Councillor Duncan. Thank you. Uh, looking through the reports, um, having heard the presentations and whatnot, I, I looked at six months worth of turnaround and for me five years is a long time to commit to the level of funding based on six months. And I came in thinking two years. I, I can see two years, one year is too short. Two years gives you a bit more time, but I was very concerned about five years. <clears throat> Listening at the public participation, uh, the rationale and the arguments of why you required the five years got me to thinking. And, and I think the arguments you put up are viable. Um, I think it is a leap of faith. Uh, I think uh, Councillor Wainwright and Councillors Rajul made good points about where this fits within our community and having gone through Sydney yesterday in particular and, and looked at family days, I realize that's a special event and we happen to have absolutely stunning weather. But um, nevertheless, we did have a huge appeal uh, with community outreach beyond the boundaries of Sydney, let alone the peninsula. And so the leap of faith I'm going to take as an elected official is to say, I think we have to do the five years. I think if we're going to make this, give it a fighting chance after the years that weren't good and, and what have come through, if we're going to do this, I guess we just have to do it. So I'm willing to go with the five years. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Duncan. Thank you. I can be brief because I think <laughs> Councillor Fallett and, and Councillor Intrul and Councillor Wainwright have said most of what I was going to say. Um, I guess I just wanted to pull out just the last thing that Councillor Wainwright has said about, you know, if they get to that end of that five years now that we've had this funding level, I feel this is probably, I guess, to what Councillor O'Keefe said earlier about having come back for more and come back for more and come back for more and still having, you know, projections that may not be the greatest this is probably the maximum amount of funding the town this size can probably look at. Like this is probably now that they've looked at it and they've fixed everything, they probably aren't gonna come back for more, couldn't come back for more, it wouldn't be supportable. So they're either gonna make it in this five years, they're gonna figure it out or they're not and that's gonna be the decision for the next council or they're gonna figure out having to scale back. So I feel like we have to at least give them the chance to be successful. I know many, Many moons ago, in the last year, Councillor O'Keefe had brought up about um, aquariums and whether even having an aquarium was viable anymore because so many around the world were shutting down. Aquariums are very expensive. So we know that, that it's a, a difficult business to make go, but some of them can make it. And if they're going to make it, it'll be based on this and what they've done and with us being able to give the support. And we'll at least know whether it was viable to continue using this space that the town purchased specifically for this purpose or not. And without doing this, I feel like we would have still left that an open question about whether if we could have could have made that. So I feel quite comfortable with going with, with the five years, see what they can do, and then the next council has to make a hard decision. It will at least be a decision where everyone has really exhausted what could be done. 
Thank you, Councillor Duncan. I'd like to, to speak for first time before going to second speakers. I, um, uh, I, I recall back to, uh, to the presentation uh, at our previous meeting and, and how impressed uh, many of us were uh, with the presentation and with the success that the uh, Centre has shown uh, over, the past, uh, over the past year with the, uh, with the smaller uh, grant increase of, of $65,000. And, um, and uh, I think a lot of work, well, we, we commented that a lot of work has gone in to, uh, to the future plan and uh, that there uh, uh, is a lot of confidence on the part of management and on the, on the part of the Board of Directors, and, and that's very impressive. Um, as one of six founding directors of, uh, of the aquarium, um, uh, five million dollars were raised uh, in the community, uh, and the center was built out for 4.2 million dollars in 10,000 square feet. Uh, I can't remember how many gallons of salt water go through, or liters go through a day, but it's staggering. Uh, there are 3,000, uh, and that's 24/7. Uh, there are 3,000 uh, critters, ocean critters, and um, it's an amazing facility. Uh, the level of uh, volunteer work, uh, not only at the board level, but uh, the young volunteers uh, starting in their early teens is, uh, is just amazing in this community. And um, it's, uh, it's uh, geographically uh, centered in the center of the Salish Sea and uh, has a fine reputation uh, through the entire Salish Sea area and beyond. And I think it is a great credit to the success that they've had uh, during the time uh, they've been in operation. Have there been challenges? Absolutely. I can recall uh, the original grant given to the, uh, to, to the center was, uh, was $45,000. Uh, and that wasn't based on a calculation of need. That happened to be uh, a, a shift of a grant of $45,000 that was given to the predecessor small facility on a barge in, uh, in Port Sydney Marina. And I can recall sitting on council in 2008 or 2009 and there were councillors that said, well, they raised $5 million and spent four million building it out and that sort of thing, they'll be, they'll be off the $45,000 in no time. They'll be so successful in that sort of thing. It's a nonprofit organization. Uh, the engineering and, and as I say, the, the, the capital replacement works that are needed there uh, are more substantial, I think, than anywhere else in our, in, uh, in our, in our uh, community organizations. And um, I'm fully supportive of uh, this level of funding. However, um, the agreement that is in place with the uh, Shaw Center for the Sailor Sea now is until 2027. And what we're doing is basically amending that agreement with additional funding. And my suggestion and where my comfort level is, is that uh, five years is a long time. However, two years is too short. And that if we provide this uh, increased level of funding, uh, 205, up to two th from 65 to 205,000 for the years 2020, 2021, 20, and 2022, so that's three years of funding in addition to the 65,000 that they had last year, I think that gives them ample time to demonstrate uh, uh, future, or further progress uh, and success. And that what that would mean is we, in our final year of our term, in 2022, uh, would then uh, begin entertaining presentations or discussions with the, uh, with the Shaw Centre um, into uh, future funding for the remainder of the, uh, remainder of the contract till 2027. I'll also note and confirmed with uh, Mr. Hissick earlier today that uh, in that 20-year uh, agreement, I believe it is, originally it was a 20-year agreement, that there is a provision in that agreement to review the funding level every five years. And that, uh, that next time is 2020, 2022. Yeah, there we go. So I would suggest that uh, with the success we've seen to date, um, I think that three years is, uh, is a good level of funding and would give this council with the experience we've gained from presentations uh, from, uh, from the organization last year and going through the process we have this year that we would be um, well equipped to make a good decision um, in 2022. Councillor O'Keefe for a second time. Thank you. Um, I was I was leaning towards more two two years maybe, but I, I could support three years. And I guess you know my reasons again for for not the full five years. While I have every confidence in the current board and management, um, it's. Nonprofit organizations 
boards and staff come and go. And in terms of, you know, comments made about, you know, um, deserving a chance to, to, to see if they can make a go of it. So it's, it's been there for 10 years. And, and so if, if they're going to make a go of it, I, I would have expected to, for it to be sustainable by now. And we've talked about the, the problem, so won't rehash that. So for those reasons, you know, I think I don't feel it's responsible. I don't feel I'm doing my due diligence to the taxpayers and the community by approving funding for a long-term period for five years, um, knowing that we're maybe on the cusp of um, turning this around and being sustainable. But that's the main thing. Is it sustainable? Is, is a complex operation like this with seawater running through through tanks and and uh, critters and all that sort of thing sustainable so um, I think three years is a good uh, compromise so I would be willing to support that uh, council um, the while I, I'm generally open to compromise um, Approving uh, 2020, 2021, 2022 is actually only going to have two years of funding done when we start making the decision. Because the 2023 budget, we will be deciding in January, February of 2022 what we're going to be saying about the 2023 budget. So we're going to have two years of performance, not three when time comes to make that decision. And I think two years is too short. So if you want to give them three years of performance, as in approve it up to 2023 and maybe thinking about cutting them in 2024, that adds an additional year. That gives them three years to demonstrate. But I, I don't think what you're proposing does give them three years. I think it only gives them two. And I'm, I won't support that. Sorry, just to clarify, what, what I suggested would give them funding in 2022, okay. so there would be three years. Right, but they would have to be thinking about they may be shutting down in 2023, and actually we would be telling them in February of 2022 what the financial plan is going to say about 2023. Like, if you're making the decision you can't start 2023 um, with a, you know, with a blank. We just finished 2022, and now we're two months into the year, and we don't know what our funding is. It doesn't work that, you know, they they can't do that. So we're going to be making the decision about 2023 in February of 2022, and they're only going to have two years of performance at that point. Okay. I, I see what you're saying now. I, I'm comfortable with what I've seen over the past year and what I would see for the next uh, uh, two years. They would have the funding for 2022 and enter into discussions at some point in 2023, but I'll leave others to speak. Uh, Councillor Rintoul. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, likewise, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm open to see some compromise if, if that's necessary to provide some, uh, uh, some, some stability, but, you know, we're here looking at a, a a five-year financial window for the town. Uh, the request is for five years. Uh, my preference is to support five years, and, and I'll, I'll vote accordingly uh, uh, on that on that basis. I, I, with respect to um, you know our responsibility uh, to the taxpayers, um, you know I think I think we're meeting it. This is this is uh, a service to the community. This is uh, an economic contributor to the community. And I imagine um, a real vacuum without uh, the center uh, being at, uh, in Sydney and drawing people into our town and to this community. And so um, I'm, I'm quite comfortable looking to uh, continue to support this uh, for five-year funding. Thank you. So for clarification, Mr. Hissick, if we approve five-year funding, they would get the $205,000 until which year? Twenty. I think I need to clarify with uh, the Shaw Center. My understanding is that with 2020 being approved, they're asking for five additional years on top of that, which would be 21 through 25. Is that correct? 
that is what they're seeking. So it would be one year beyond this current financial plan. Okay, so it's uh, in effect 65 last year, 65 this year, and then a 205 for five years from 21 to 25. Right. Okay, so we, if we were to approve that, which is the motion on the, the floor at the moment, where does it stand with regards to the current agreement and the provision in the agreement for us to review funding at five years, and which would be 2022? If we've uh, made this commitment now, there would be no need to review in 2022. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gunnett. <clears throat> Just a point of clarification. Mm -hmm. This year is actually 145, is it not? 65 plus the 80 for this year that we've already committed. This year is 205. It, it, so it's, okay. Yeah. I was looking at the number of 80 for 2020. 80 is the incremental uh, over last year. Huh. Over last year, okay, thank you. Sorry, we're gonna need further clarification then. If it's 140, or 205 this year. Mm -hmm. So essentially the 205 for, for this year has been approved and we're deliberating over 205 for additional years. We'd already approved 2000, 2005, or two, 205? That's yeah. correct. Last year, their funding was 125, so 80,000 on top of that takes us to 205. Okay. My apologies, uh, I stand corrected. Uh, uh, Councillor O'Keefe. Um, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm still okay what, uh, with what the mayor has proposed. I can, um, and if, if, it, if it's that we just have two years of information to look at. I'm, I'm happy with that. In, in the plan that, that has been submitted, basically all I want to see is that, you know, they, the, the center went through a process. They had the town paid for them to have uh, a business analyst uh, review information, um, uh, a lot of projections, and based on their projections, they, they have shown that it can be sustainable. So if after two years, all, all I wanna see is that, okay, they, this is what they said they would do with the money. And I just wanna see that, that that's exactly what happened. And I think, you know, that we can see that in two years. I'm, I'm happy with that. You know, I wanna reiterate that I'm not, I'm, I'm not suggesting that the center is not a valuable asset to the community. On the contrary, it is. All I want to make sure is that it's going to be able to continue to operate, that it, that it is su sustainable. And so to have, if we, if we go for uh, till 2022, and if after two years they've done exactly what they've said they're gonna do, I'm happy with that. And uh, we're not asking them to do anything um, over and above. It was their plan that they came up with based on uh, research and analysis and they said that if you give us this money we're going to be able to do this and so I'm happy with what you propose okay thank you so just to understand we last year approved 65,000 for 219 and 100 and sorry and 205,000 for sorry 145,000 60 additional thousand last year which took it to one yeah there um Historical funding level was 65. We gave them an additional 60 last year to bring it to 125. And now it's an additional 80 to take it to 205. So we increased it last year to 125 and now and, 100 and 205 this year. So what it will mean is between last year's resolution and this year's resolution, we will have given 125 in 2019 and 205,000 for six years. Uh, if we do want to amend the main motion on the table, it would take, I, I would ask another councillor to do that. Otherwise, we'll take further discussion on the main motion and I'll call the question. I, I would move an amendment to provide funding till 2022. Second. 
Any further discussion? I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, four opposed, the motion is defeated. So we do have the main motion on the floor for an additional five years of funding at $205,000 from 2021 to 2025. Any further discussion? I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Three opposed, the motion carries. Thank you for the deliberations. Congratulations to the Shaw Center. Okay, if we could uh, now move to um, uh, Sydney Museum and Archives. Sure. They are seeking 20,000 in additional funding on an ongoing basis. Okay, so uh, we have, um, I will look for a motion from council. I move the requested funding be approved. Second. Uh, discussion? If I might just start off. Um, uh, in similar uh, to the previous discussion, there is an agreement in place with uh, Sydney Museum and Archives and Mr. Hissick that... Uh, it expires at the end of 2022. It expires at the end of 2022. Uh, and so as the motion sits now, um, if we were to approve this motion, it would actually approve this twenty additional t or this twenty thousand dollars of funding beyond twenty two. It, it would approve it indefinitely unless we were to amend the motion to say that the twenty thousand dollars in additional funding would be to a certain point in time. For example, the end of the current agreement. That, that's council's prerogative, and mm -hmm. uh, okay. in, in so a I sense, it would make sense in that we do have to re renegotiate after 22, which will probably initiate um, at least six months in advance. And uh, so the request is for 20 is for an additional 20,000 um, uh, to be added as, as a line item into the future. Um, and can, sorry, Mr. Hissa, can you remind us what the uh, what the current level of funding is? Uh, approximately 87,000. Okay, so that $87,000 in funding uh, will expire with or at the agreement. In 2022, again, we're going to have to give consideration to the future, and the museum will certainly come forward in due time to uh, to request an extension or uh, a future contract or a future um, a future agreement. Councillor Henry, um, <coughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. So the only thing about this particular uh, request is that um, they're asking uh, for half the money from Sydney and half from North Saanich, and it would seem to me that our approval should be conditional on matching North Saanich because if North Saanich turns them down and and we've put in our full share and that's all they've got and I, I'm not saying that's going to happen but um, it actually gives North Saanich a bit of incentive to understand that uh, our uh, funding to the museum is contingent on them matching it so I would rather see it go forward on that basis as far as the financial plan goes, it's either in or out, but in terms of the actual amount they get, I would say it should be contingent on North Saanich matching that increase. And if North Saanich only gives them 10, we would only give them 10. Uh, thank you, Mr. Renner. A question through to, to Mr. Hissick. Um, do we happen to know what level of funding uh, North Saanich is currently providing to the museum? Um, not off the top of my head, but uh, it's probably in, in their budget submission, which I could look up, but it's considerably less than what we're providing. It's somewhere yes. in the neighborhood of um, $10,000. 10, $10, dollars. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I could foresee North Saanich looking at the proportion that is of the current funding and suggesting that they might wish to keep that proportion in place, but not going there. I will leave it open to other councillors for discussion. Uh, Mr. Uh, Councillor Rantoul. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, specifically with, with respect to Councillor Wainwright's uh, suggestion that the funding match uh, what North Saanich is prepared to put forward, I recollect asking the question during the presentation, uh, what happens if you don't get uh, funding from, uh, from, the, uh, from the other source, in that case North Saanich, 
And as I recollect, the reply was, uh, you know, they would uh, reconfigure their plans and, and look to try and do something potentially on a part-time basis uh, and, and scale back, but to forge ahead with the uh, concepts that were identified in, in the presentation. Uh, I think having heard the amount in which uh, North Sandwich contributes, it's unlikely uh, that, that they're going to uh, perhaps be uh, uh, looking to uh, fulfill the request that's uh, being submitted by the museum, but that remains to be seen. I, I would feel a little bit uh, uncomfortable uh, tying uh, our support uh, to the same level as North Saanich for uh, a variety of reasons, um, not least of which is uh, potentially you know, reducing uh, the museum's ability to, uh, uh, to fulfill its you know, intentions here with respect to uh, the undertaking. So I, I, I look forward to further discussion uh, on, on the amount uh, that Sydney Council may look to uh, provide an additional support to the museum. Uh, I'm, I'm favorable, you know, I'm looking at this as the five-year planning period. Uh, I'm comfortable uh, seeing the commitment that we make this evening to be throughout that uh, financial planning period. And um, coming in this evening, I was comfortable with the amount that was being requested, uh, having noted that the uh, museum and its staff complement uh, certainly very lean and that we're looking to see uh, the museum continue to have some, some really excellent exhibits uh, visit and, and we went through that during the presentation. Uh, there could very well be an opportunity to introduce you know, some, some met metrics and reporting back to council uh, you know, contingent on, a, on an increased level of funding, but I'll leave it there for further discussion. Thank you. Uh, Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, thank you. So um, I think one thing that's important to note with, with the museum is that um, What's different about the museum, say from the Shaw Center or other things, is that the, the museum is the holder of our archives and our phys all those things that are in there, the, the, the uh, artifacts, they're actually owned by the town. And so the museum is keeping those things and caring for them um, on our behalf. Um, I think, uh, I know that they're, they're, they're greatly un understaffed. There's a lot of potential to do more there. So I support the, the request for an additional 20,000. However, what I would propose is um, an amendment that, that we, we do uh, approve the 20,000 um, with the provision that the current MOU be revised to include some additional requirements, such as a set reporting format that includes an ongoing five-year strategic plan, an annual report that outlines the progress towards goals in the strategic plan, a reporting template for metrics, such as attendance, education programs, archives usage, et cetera, and a minimum of one special exhibit per year that focuses on local history. Um, so I, I feel like we've, we've asked the, the Shaw Center and their request for additional funding for s some metrics and that sort of thing. Um, so I think it's reasonable to ask those things of the museum as well. And especially because they're such an important cultural entity for the town. I think it's important for there to be uh, some set reporting and reporting back um, to us on, on those things. Councillor Gurney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, those are some excellent points raised by Councillor O'Keefe um, and Councillor Runtool. I, I also support the uh, funding increase, I, if nothing more than just simply looking at the succession planning part of it. Um, not to say that Peter won't be with us for many, many more years, but uh, I think it's important that uh, somebody else is hired into the fold to know how to properly run the institution that they have over there and that uh, it's a smooth transition. Uh, so I think even if it's just us and we can, they can hire somebody part time. It starts the it starts the process. And so, when you do decide to you know go and enjoy your life outside of the museum, um, they'll it'll be a seamless transition, and we'll still have the same excellent professional museum we have that's recognized by many people in the community and outside of it. So, thank you. Thank you. If I can 
if there's no other first time speakers uh, uh, speak to it. I am, um, I'm, I'm fully supportive of, of the $20,000 additional grant to, uh, to the museum. Um, uh, one of the questions that I asked at the last meeting was there, um, was there budget planning uh, for future years or, or financials for, uh, uh, financial planning for future years? And, and the answer was no, uh, uh, given certain circumstances at, at the museum. However, I think uh, for us to provide sustainable funding in the longer term that, uh, that the museum uh, should have a longer term plan uh, with regards to the finances um, that we provide. We provide the majority of finances uh, to the um, uh, to the museum versus uh, a much lower proportion of funding to the other community organizations that we do that. And there's good reason for doing that, as Councillor O'Keefe mentioned. Uh, these are town archives and artifacts uh, that uh, they're, that are um, uh, being managed and, and operated by the uh, by the museum society, uh, the volunteer board of directors, and um, substantial group of, of volunteers. Uh, and so I again go back to the ag current agreement uh, for some $80,000 expiring at the end of 2022. If we were to approve $20,000 uh, for this year, uh, 2020, 2021, and 2022, that would give three years of funding. The museum is going to be coming back to us in 2020 in any event, regardless of our decision this evening, uh, to negotiate uh, and discuss a future contract. So I would be comfortable having it in place uh, until 2020, uh, 2022. Um, and I might suggest an amendment uh, to the, or uh, uh, councillors suggest an amendment that, um, that the agreement actually be amended. If we pass the additional 20,000 for whatever time period that we um, include in the motion that the uh, current agreement be amended to include that. Do you want a motion? Uh, we have a motion on the floor. Okay. Uh, for funding for uh, a continuous period of time that is beyond uh, the agreement. There is, no, uh, there is no end date to this additional $20,000 of funding. While there is an end date to the uh, current base funding of, of some $80,000, $85,000. Uh, Councillor Wainwright and then Councillor Peake. So um, what I've heard from my colleagues is there really isn't an expectation that North Saanich is going to contribute half of the funding necessary for the position that they're proposing. Um, and then that leads me to basically wonder, so if we put in 20,000, which isn't as much as what they need, what are they actually going to do? Because they're clearly not going to do what's proposed because we wouldn't be giving them enough money to do that. So our, like, I suppose um, what I'm hearing from my colleagues is we'll give you $20,000 and hire this person on a part-time basis and that's the expectation. And the only reason I'm asking is that uh, you know, clearly 20000 doesn't buy $40,000 worth of project. Okay. So I'm going to uh, uh, take a point of order here and go to, uh, go to staff and ask, uh, by council resolution, if we were per to permit uh, Mr. Garning from the museum to address that question at the podium, would that be uh, in order? Uh, so if we could have a motion to permit Mr. Garnum to, uh, to address council if he so wishes. Sure. So moved. Second. In favor? All in favor? Yeah, motion carries. Mr. Garnum, are you willing to uh, entertain that question? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, councillors. Um, yeah, it's on. Um, with that, uh, as I mentioned when we made the presentation, that if we get the 20,000, um, then we will find the additional funds um, to get that person, even though those additional funds may be on a temporary basis year by year that we apply to either the Canada, Canadian government or the uh, Government of Canada to get that in some form that we can support. A lot of the funds from the uh, Government of Canada are 50% and uh, that then would, we would be then matching the 50% and enable us to do that. And if I could also just, I hope it's not out of order, uh, mention that the um, the uh, 
Treasurer of North Saanich is waiting to hear the results from Sydney because they believe that will have an impact on the decision making of Council. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garner. I appreciate Thank that. Thank you. So we did have a, uh, Mr. Wainwright, did you want, or uh, Councillor Wainwright, did you wish to continue? No. No. Okay, Councillor Key. Um, I, I was going to propose a, a, an amendment that we, if we approve the that we approve the 20,000 and also um, with the provision that the current, sorry. No, if, if I could just, for when oh, you sure. change that statement. I didn't, I, sorry, I wish to comment on what you were asking, requesting with where it's the metrics, but I'll let you finish. Okay, so what I was going to propose an amendment that the, um, the 20,000 be approved with the provision that the current MOU be revised to include th that amount um, along with the following requirements. Um, a set reporting format that includes ongoing five-year strategic plan, an annual report that outlines the progress towards goals and the strategic plan, a reporting template for metrics such as attendance, education programs, archives usage, etc., and a minimum of one special exhibit per year that focuses on local history. Okay, if I can, uh, did you wish to speak, Mr. Hiss? Uh, only to say that uh, would council be patient in giving them some time to come up with all these brand new things uh, or would it be expected in year one uh, if I could if I could speak to that mm -hmm. Mr. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sure. Um, I, I'm opposed to the amendment um, in that what I'm proposing is funding till 2022 I think um, uh, last year when we had a request from the aquarium for the sailor sea uh, and we, uh, we limited the increase of funding and we uh, made a request for staff to meet with representatives of the organization to discuss appropriate metrics. That report was back, brought back to us and it was presented. I think for council to unilaterally uh, impose certain metrics uh, at this time is inappropriate. At, at best, I might support uh, a direction for staff as they did with the aquarium uh, to, uh, to discuss appropriate uh, metrics uh, to be brought forward in the future. But quite frankly, I think uh, this council has made clear to organizations such as the Aquarium and speaking of it with uh, the museum in attendance um, that they uh, will be diligent in presenting future reports uh, complete with metrics. And I don't think we should be imposing uh, specific metrics uh, on an organization without uh, two-way discussion. So I, I won't support the amendment, and so we will continue discussion on the amendment. And so for first time. Oh, um, okay. So I'm, I, I'm fine to, to make it a bit more, more flexible in terms of um, if we want to change the wording to that uh, reporting template for metrics uh, to be established in consultation with staff over the next year, I'm fine with that. Um, I don't think it's unreasonable for us to to be asking for those sorts of metrics from an organization that is is the museum for our town. We are the primary source of their funding. Um, in, in other municipalities, museums are actually part of, they're like a department of, of the town. And so they, they fall under the same sort of reporting requirements in terms of strategic planning and metrics and that sort of thing. So I don't think it's at all an unreasonable uh, thing for us to ask um, for, for those sorts of things. You know, one observation that I've had, you know, since over the last couple of years with council is that it's kind of hit and miss sometimes with community organizations, depending who's on the board, who's the executive director in terms of the information we get. So I think it's actually a good thing to state up front to organizations, here's a prescribed format, so it's easy. Everybody knows what's expected. Um, if a new board, a new executive director comes on board, it's laid out very clearly. This is what the town wants to see. And I don't think that's, that, to me, that's a normal course of doing business, and it's just um, being upfront about the information that we want, so. Uh, Councillor Duncan and Councillor Fallon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
I'm going to say this as, an, as another proposal just to make things interesting, but I'm saying it now just because I feel like it kind of addresses all three of the points that I've heard raised from my colleagues. So uh, going back to Councillor Wainwright's concern and then the answer we received from Mr. Garnham, I know that there are people on the North Sandwich Council who are very supportive of this ask and in increasing this ask. What I fear is that since they haven't done it to date, there will be people who, now that they know, they will make up this amount, whether or not North Saanich provides it. As long as we do, they'll cobble it together for the rest of it. I feel there's going to be at least one person on that council who's going to say, well, let them cobble it together then. So my proposal is we approve the funding to 2022, as the mayor has suggested, and then the continuing funding is contingent on North Saanich matching from then on out. If they have to cobble for the next two years, we'll set North Saanich debates it amongst themselves. They can do that. But then that continuing funding and having that 40,000 locked in place is contingent on North Saanich stepping up and, and paying that proportion. And then the metrics can come in. They have a year to kind of discuss that and then come up with those metrics so that by the end of 2022, when they're looking at that, they will have those. Okay, so we have a main motion on the floor <laughs> to uh, provide additional uh, $20,000 funding uh, indefinitely. We have an amendment on the floor um, to, uh, to make the amendment with regards to, to metrics, uh, uh, um, modifying the, the agreement. Yeah, yeah. You referred yeah. to MOU, it's an agreement. Oh, so okay. we would modify the agreement. And now we have an amendment on the amendment, uh, which, sorry? Uh, go to staff. We are we can do an amendment on an amendment, so long as it doesn't change the the uh, the substance of the amend first amended motion. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll hold that uh, for the moment, and we'll deal with the uh, the amendment. So, any further discussion on the amendment? Um, could I be clear on what the wording is? Because there were some very yes. specific metrics proposed. Um, yeah, so basically it was. Sorry, just to, to interject, when you said specific, I think, did the mover amend to just metrics and not specific yes, metrics? Yes, to uh, say, provide uh, re reporting metrics to be uh, in in, done in consultation with staff. Nelson, if you could read so, the motion so, back to so basically, it's that so basically, it's that the current agreement be revised to include the $20,000 of funding and also with the understanding that the metrics will be determined in consultation with town staff and the museum. Okay. Not being specific to the, f to the four that you yeah. mentioned. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, any further discussion on that amendment? Okay, I won't be supporting the amendment again because I wish to see that the limit of the funding be until 2022 and that is not included in this motion. This motion is providing the additional funding indefinitely. Uh, Councillor Rintoul. Just as a point of clarification, your, your reference to providing the funding indefinitely, um, and it may be through to staff, Mr. Mayor, uh, I would have thought the opportunity to uh, readdress the agreement uh, comes with the opportunity to uh, readdress funding. So uh, it, while we are signaling to the museum uh, the $20,000 increase, uh, it may well be readdressed as part of the agreement at any rate would have been my assumption coming in here today. Well, I'd suggest that we include it within the terms of the existing agreement. Mr. Hissick? In my mind, this would reset the base amount for opening negotiations following the, uh, you know, for the renewal of the agreement beyond 2022. So we'd be looking at uh, roughly 107,000 as a starting point and then either reduce or increase from there uh, for the next five years. Regardless of, if, if you give it um, permanent approval at this time, it's still subject to us renewing that agreement with the museum after 2022. So in effect, this funding is only until the expiry of the current agreement. 
so far it's always been renewed on a five-year uh, basis so we have no reason to think it won't be it's just the, the funding will be reconsidered okay i just thought it would be uh, clear if it was part of the motion but if that's the uh, interpretation from staff i'm comfortable with that uh Wayne. so just for clarity on the procedural stuff um we've got a motion on the floor to amend the main motion and if it passes we're then going to vote on the amended main motion. Mm -hmm. Okay, just, yep. yep, it's two step. Yes. Okay, seeing no further discussion, I'll call the question on the amendment. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Any further discussion on the main, uh, the main motion? Can, can, can we, can we, yeah, reiterate the main motion? So is it basic, the basic the amended, amended right? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. I'm personally not clear if you're going to be funding the twenty thousand dollars till twenty twenty two or ongoing. My understanding is that the twenty thousand will not be ongoing unless it's matched by North Saanich. No. No. no? Okay, that was an amendment that we withdrew. Oh, okay. Because we had an amendment on the floor. Council Wayne, right? Um, thank you. So my understanding is that the um, if this passes, the agreement with the museum would be up for renewal in 2022, but the five-year financial plan is probably going to predict five years. So that 20,000 increase will show in the plan for the full five, you know, till 2024, even though the agreement's gonna come up for renewal in 2022, because that is the base amount for the subsequent years. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hissick? Absolutely, we, in the absence of other information, that's the best we have to go on, so it would remain at that level. So I'm sorry, my general comment is it would be very simple to just go ahead and say to 2022, but we're reluctant to do that, so Councillor O'Keefe. Well, I guess Your mic, I, your mic. Oh, sorry. The, the, um, the motion, the amendment that I thought I made was that the current MOU was to be amended to include the additional $20,000 and then we're gonna do something with these, these metrics. So, but maybe what isn't clear to all of us is when we're amending the current MOU. Agreement. Or agreement, sorry. When we're amending the current agreement, are we amending the date of its expiry of 2022? Or are we, I don't think we stated um, that specifically. Council could choose to reset the uh, the five year term upon approval of this, or leave it at 2022. And if council was only comfortable with uh, approving the funding until the end of 2022, then so be it. Uh, staff will amend the agreement accordingly. Okay, if I can go to staff for a moment, um, Ms. Nelson. Um, as I view it now, the amended motion in, in effect replaced the original motion. I don't think there is anything in the original motion that isn't contained within the amended motion. So we could consider that right, so right a final. So it will be in the balance of the financial plan. Yes. Okay, so there's nothing contained in the original motion that isn't covered in the, uh, in the amended motion. So we don't need to vote on. We do need we to vote, vote on the amended motion. Because we voted on the amendment, and now we're back to the original with the amendment, with the addition of the amendment. And so, can you read that, please? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it would be that uh, the twenty thousand dollar funding be approved for the Sydney Museum and Archives. 
uh, with the current agreement being revised to include the twenty thousand additional twenty thousand dollar funding, with the understanding that the metrics would be uh, determined with the consultation between staff and the museum. Any further discussion, uh, Councillor Rintoul? Sorry, at risk of prolonging this, uh, you know, the difference between this uh, proposal and the one we discussed previously, um, not just the amount of money, obviously, but it also relates to uh, alternate funding partners. And I detect some concern, certainly on the part of Mayor and possibly others, with regard to the length and time in which we're making this commitment and the museum uh, still uh, having the opportunity to seek funding partners. And so, uh, if there's an appetite to do so, I would move an amendment to the amended motion to add the reference that this would expire uh, with the, to refer the timeline to the current agreement. In other words, the additional funding would expire when the agreement expires and it would be subject to renegotiation at that time. So we have the main motion on the floor. We have an amendment that's been approved. We have a second amendment. Do we have a seconder? We don't have a seconder. We will proceed with further discussion on the main motion. Councillor Duncan and Councillor Fallot. Sorry, Councillor Rintoul, I didn't second that because I had slightly different wording. If we can amend the amended motion, my wording for that went as follows. So it was to continue the 20,000 funding to the end of the agreement in 2022 with the continued $20,000 funding continuing past that agreement, contingent upon North Saanich matching it. Hmm. So that the base amount that's going into that agreement is the 20,000. But then when it's, but that we would, con sorry. So the base amount, yeah, exactly. So the base so, amount going into that is 20,000. So 000. this amendment contains two parts. One is that it, it, it was until 2022 and the second is that at the end of 22, that that continued funding is is uh, I don't know, and I'll, I'll go through to the staff whether we can actually impose a condition in the motion to a future agreement. The, the, what you what you're doing is the second part of that is not part of the current agreement. It's part it's consideration for a future agreement, and I don't think we need to contain that. In the, uh, in the existing motion by uh, Mr. Hissick. Uh, in my opinion, the council's intention is clear if you support that amendment so that when it comes time to renewing the agreement uh, beyond 2022, we'll know what conditions you want in place for us to do that. So we can move forward on that basis. So I'm not sure if I can go back to Councillor Duncan that there's actually amended motion because if we remove the conditional aspect with regards to other partner funding, it, it's no longer an amendment other than putting an expiry date of, of uh, 2022 on it, which we just had um, not passed or not seconded. So it's not a new motion. Well, see, I think I thought it was because they're asking us for funding continuing past their agreement date. No. No. As was, as was clarified earlier, the level of current funding by agreement that expires in 2022 is approximately $85,000. Okay. That, that unless we change the terms of that current agreement by motion this evening, that agreement remains in place. We've had suggested by the main motion that we uh, amend the current agreement to include an additional $20,000 in funding with future metrics to be discussed and presented. There is nothing yet with regards to a condition with regards to our motion. Point of order. Yes. We don't have a seconder for her amendment. But it's not, I was already making a point yeah, that it's not a motion. We don't need to debate if she doesn't have a seconder. That's probably quickest. Sir, I'll go to staff and that's not a motion. That's not a new motion. Okay, thank you. 
Any further discussion on the main motion? Please. Councillor Fowler. <laughs> Thank you. This is really complicated for a very simple matter. They're asking for $20,000. The question is, do we think we should give them $20,000 extra or not, full stop? The agreement is coming up in 2022. So if we choose to give them $20,000 more per year without putting an end date, that contract or agreement is going to be revisited anyhow. Uh, it's been very clear. I think there's nobody who's missed the fact that we expect some um, some stats to back up and some rationale and some planning to where you want to go with uh, where the museum wants to go with this. So I'm really hesitant. Although I appreciate the argument that Councillor Duncan brought up that. Uh, Mr. Garnham has mentioned that if they get some of the money from Sydney but they don't get North Saanich or they don't get the full amount that they're going to look for other funding partners, so then why come to the taxpayer directly? Why not go to those funding partners? Part of it is that there's a 50-50 uh, granting process, uh, so obviously municipalities have to come up with something. Um, but I'm really loath to take the suggestion that we tie this together with another municipality that this is going to be this way or that. It's getting complex and I think it's a really simple thing. I'm in favor of giving them the $20,000. I'm in favor, uh, obviously I second it, Councillor O'Keefe's um, amendment to um, add some metrics to what they're doing and the agreement is coming up in 2022 so full stop that's it can be renegotiated and discussed from that point on thank you any further discussion seeing none i'll call the question all those in favor opposed the motion carries okay is there any other supplemental item that uh, a council member would like to uh, make a motion on this evening Uh, just a point of procedure, Mr. Hissick. Uh, so, if there were no other discussions, would it be appropriate to have a motion to approve the remaining um, supplemental request? That's correct, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, so moved. Councilor Second. Ray. Any discussion? I'll wait, uh, Councilor O'Keefe. Go ahead. Um, sorry, I was just looking. Was the, um, the the trolley service? Was that yes? That's in here. I guess, I know. So I guess my question is, it is in the suppl supplemental items. Mm -hmm. So if we thought that we're no longer interested in this, is is even though it's in a subsequent bu budget year, would we still bring it up now or would we do that next year? Now would be a good time if that's a leftover from a previous council and this is the first time really that this council has well, maybe the second you've looked at it, and if you're not interested in that anymore, we should take it out now. So I would move that we uh, remove the trolley service pilot project 2022 for 20,000. Second. So we have an amendment seconded, uh, discussion on the amendment, Council Wainwright. Yeah, so um, first comment I'm gonna make is it's eight o'clock, and I'm thinking we should be focused on the upcoming years because the odds are getting pretty high that we're going to be scheduling another meeting. But since there's a motion to cut this thing, um, I think there has been a fair amount of misunderstanding about what's being proposed. And the recent article in the Penisa News Review uh, significantly contributed to that. Um, what is uh, has been talked about uh, on this is... Uh, a shuttle service basically connecting downtown to the employee parking lot to our West Sydney industrial area and back. And it, it's um, largely about facilitating uh, employees in that West industrial area getting back and forth uh, from the downtown. And if we want employees to park in the employee parking lot in the winter, 
pouring rain, cold and dark, and get to their places of employment on the waterfront, like most of them are not going to be happy walking that kind of distance in the driving rain, cold and dark. But if you give them a shuttle service, it makes it a lot easier for them to do that. So this had um, a fair amount of potential, but we hadn't actually looked at it carefully and figured out what the route might be, which likely would not be the same as what the Peninsula News Review reported. Like we weren't talking about getting to the airport, for example. Um, and it would involve some discussion with our West Sydney employers about timing, uh, you know, to get people to and from shifts. Um, there was also some interest in getting people from um, West Sydney to go into t downtown during lunch hour and then get back in a timely way. And um, there was some thought about doing this as a pilot project. And uh, at any rate, this um, ticks a lot of the boxes on our, um, our transportation sort of interests. It uh, ticks a lot of the boxes on, um, on uh, our climate action stuff, getting people to uh, um, pedestrian and alternate transportation kinds of things. Uh, it is very high on the list of um, West Sydney employers' interests, as in getting their employees to and from work. And we know, we've certainly heard from them, that they have a lot of issues with um, connecting from where transit lets them off to like the last mile of getting them to where they work. So this had the potential to address all of that kind of stuff and fit a lot of our priorities. But, you know, this motion is saying, no, we have no interest in even exploring it. Like, we're, we're going to remove it from the radar completely um, because it doesn't fit any of our objectives. That's basically what's being proposed. And I disagree. I think this is something that we should look at. I can appreciate that we're not going to do this in the middle of our OCP review. It's got to be down the road. But uh, it seems to me that as far as expenditures go, that one has the potential for contributing a lot of return. I mean, it may not be feasible, but unless we actually look at it, um, we're, we're not going to know. And if we don't have any resources in there to look at it, well, it just goes by the boards. So I really don't support cutting it. If you want to have a serious discussion about it in 2022, that would be the time I would entertain cutting it. But to kind of casually do it now without, um, <laughs> without having a, a reasonable conversation about it, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, I just have a, uh, sorry, Councillor O'Keefe, and then I'd like to speak. So, just to, to, to clarify, this is, is not based on a, a casual sort of flippant sort of uh, a reaction to what was in, in the PNR. So, so, last year I had the opportunity to sit through the, um, pretty well most of the meeting, or the year before last, for the, uh, the old EDC Economic Development uh, Commission. And so this is something that I, that's, that's where it uh, had, had a lot of discussion. And at that time, um, what came back from the individual who had researched it, it was that it didn't appear to be a viable option for a number of reasons. So um, having a trolley um, would mean, okay, you have to lease, you have to lease or, or rent some sort of bus or trolley. Um, you had to um, hire people who were going, probably at least a couple of people because you'd have to have different shifts. And there was maintenance and administration involved in, in, in all of that. So at the time, the EAC at that time did not think that it was worth pursuing. And so they didn't. And so that's why I was surprised that it was still here. Um, I think for all the reasons that the previous EDC mentioned um, in terms of uh, the potential costs of 
maintenance, administration, all that, that sort of thing. It doesn't seem to me a worthwhile endeavor to hire $20,000 to get a transit consultant to, to go through this again. I think our energy is better focused on looking at um, our tr transportation network in general. I know that with, with the airport in North Saanich and um, they're looking at better service out to the airport. So I think a better solution is not having our own standalone trolley project, but to be looking more at that initiative that the, the airport is currently looking at to get people out to the airport. And uh, there's talk about, they were talking about this at the chamber recently about looping in um, employees, uh, getting them over to the west side. So to me, I think that's a better use of our money rather than uh, pursuing something that the previous EDC had sort of looked into and, and thought it didn't seem to be a viable idea. Thank you, Councillor. Um, my comments are that um, uh, the idea of the trolley service arose at the time of the Omicron uh, development proposal on the 10 acres um, uh, across the highway. Uh, and it was seen uh, certainly by the Sydney Business Improvement Association uh, as a link for customers uh, to go both ways um, uh, to, the new, um, to the new retail development and, and downtown Sydney. Uh, I appreciate the comments uh, uh, Councilor Wainwright made. There were other reasons, good reasons, uh, in including the connection uh, for, uh, for West Sydney employers. Uh, but my understanding was that uh, when the Omicron proposal uh, cancelled, uh, that, uh, that this was put off uh, until future years in the budget. I I'm fine leaving it within the budget. Um, uh, we've, uh, we're going to be looking at active transportation um, through, um, uh, partly through the OCP and, and beyond. And, uh, and I think that uh, as a placeholder, uh, we can certainly look at it more closely uh, as the time approaches in 2022. Uh, the reasons uh, or the, um, the original, some of the original objectives that Councillor Wainwright spoke to this evening exist today. Uh, so we could actually be debating whether we should be approving this money this year uh, for those particular needs. But uh, uh, I would suggest there uh, at some point will be future development on airport lands uh, and uh, that this may be a, a worthwhile initiative to consider in the future. And it's, it's just really a placeholder for uh, uh, for 2022. Any future, any further discussion? So we do have a mover and seconder to remove this uh, from uh, the 20, uh, from the budget plan, which is a 2022 item. Um, seeing no more discussion, I'll call the question. All in favor of removing? Uh, opposed? We have uh, five opposed. The motion is defeated. Are there other items under supplemental uh, items that uh, councillors wish to bring forward? If not, I'll, uh, we could have a motion to approve um, the supplemental items. We have that oh, motion. sorry, we do have that yeah. main motion on the floor. My apologies. Any further discussion on the main motion? I'll call the question. All in favour? The motion carries unanimous. Thank you. So, Mr. Hissick, um, perhaps we could go to... Um, so we've dealt with uh, supplemental requests, one time and ongoing. If we go to, uh, um, page 14. <coughs> okay, there are uh, page 14. two slides with tax funded capital, if that's what you're looking to well, review or? Uh, sorry, what I was thinking of doing is, um, uh, on page 14 of your slide presentation, there was review process and there were items. So we have approved the supplemental requests, um, but you were considering whether we shouldn't have additional motions with regards to SIP funding, tax funded capital, uh, and that sort of thing. You're presenting the tax funded capital, uh, but I also wanted to, to leave it open to council uh, to go to the general capital budget and if there was any questions on any aspect of general capital, including tax funded. We, really, we haven't had any discussion as yet as council on non-tax funded capital projects. And there are 84 of them.
Yeah, the, the, sorry, the second slide on page 14. Councilor Wayne? So um, I'm comfortable with the, um, the capital budget tax funded that's uh, being presented. So I'm not looking at proposing any cuts. Um, I appreciate that uh, staff are also looking for some direction about um, capital funding from the amenity reserve and capital funding from the land sale reserve. Um, and, you know, we could deal with those items now. Okay. Uh, and then there are miscellaneous other things. Okay, I, I mean, that's one approach. What we're dealing with is we're really do dealing with different aspects. We do have... Uh, starting at page uh, 55, the entire capital budget, which includes the different funding of the, of the budget. At some point, we are going to have to approve the general capital budget, whether we want to piecemeal it in terms of approving the tax-funded ones or other, fund, and other funded sources. Mr. Hissick, if, if, if I could just for procedure, I realize mm -hmm. you've put gas tax, land tail, amenity reserve capital. Mm -hmm. um, but if we were to deal with the uh, tax-funded capital or just the mm -hmm. capital, if, if no one has any further amendments to the entire general capital budget, it would approve all of that. That's right. Okay, so I will then go back. Does anyone wish to make a comment on the general capital budget, whether it is tax-funded, gas tax-funded, land sale, amenity reserve, or other? Uh, Councillor Winfield and Councillor Garnett. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, to staff, with respect to the tax-funded capital budget that was just on screen, I know mm -hmm. you navigated away from it, but if you could refer to it, return to it, please. I would like to suggest the uh, following amendment to the uh, decorative street lighting, which is earmarked at $28,650. We e earlier uh, determined we would leave in event tents and chairs to the tune of $8,600. I would like to amend decorative street lighting down from 28,650 to 20,000 even, thus attaining Mr. Hissick's earlier 1.96% uh, uh, tax increase. So moved. I'll second that. Uh, discussion? Uh, Councilor Mayor? So um, the decorative street lighting is, has been an annual ongoing thing and they've adjusted it and it's come out with this nice round 28,650 uh, because they had some carryover. Um, I would prefer to see us leave that alone and I have some alternative ways of coming up with uh, Mr. Hizik's 1.96%. So if, if that's your only reason for doing it, um, I would... Um, Suge suggest we might explore some other alternatives first. Okay, Councillor Rintoul. Yeah, no, I'd like to keep the process moving, so uh, I'd like to leave my motion on the table and uh, vote on it. And um, yeah, I, I, I concur. Uh, it may seem it may seem arbitrary, but it also seems arbitrary to me in the first place. This figure, in that last year it was thirty thousand. Uh, you know, we talked with staff about you know where the targeted areas for for these changes and improvements are, and they're sort of an as needed uh, as opportunity presents itself basis. Uh, so I'm comfortable addressing this, and I look forward to addressing your suggestions as well. Okay. Thank you, uh, uh, Councillor Garner. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, my comment is is um, uh, first I might make an amendment to to remove the word decorative. I, I appreciate why decorative is there, but. Basically, what we're talking about is street lighting in Sydney, and and I fully believe that if we're putting street lighting in Sydney, we're put it we're putting it for lighting, which is important in our community, uh, and so I think that's why it's in the budget. Uh, the fact I think the word decorative was added at some point in time because the new light fixtures that were selected uh, several years ago happened to be, you know, fit very well with the ambience in our <coughs> town. But I think it's a little misleading when you read the word decorative you think that it's oh this maybe isn't necessary lighting it's 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 optional lighting and i think if we're doing street lighting we're doing it for the right reasons and it happens to be engineered to uh, to be appealing so that's my comment about the word decorative i'm in favor of, of street lighting as it mentions in the project description for the twenty eight thousand that represents five additional uh, i believe five or six additional light standards it's not a lot of lighting uh, each of them, each of them costs. So I'm in favor of of, of leaving it. Um, 
Okay, so without further discussion, I'll call the question. All those in favor of um, reducing it as per the uh, motion? Opposed? Uh, we have five opposed. The motion is defeated. Are there other tax funded uh, projects? Uh, Councillor Garnett. Just to be clear, we're talking about items on page 55 and up. Is that correct, Mr. Hissing? Well, we can, but while we have, since we have these tax funded projects which are included in that section, if we deal with all of these here. You want just to talk about these ones here first? If, if there are any others. Otherwise, we can go uh, back to general capital, the, the other items in general capital. There's also a second slide. This continues on the next page. Oh, come on. I believe there's an item on the list that you're interested in. <laughs> I have a question about that. Ah, okay. Yeah. Great. So, question through to through you to staff. Um, can town staff and uh, other RCMP, whatever have you, access the fitness and gym at the CSB? Through the chair to um, Councillor Garner, at this time, uh, the answer is no. It's reserved for uh, volunteers and as well as the BC Ambulance paramedics. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, so we, uh, we have the option. We can make a motion to approve the remaining tax funded projects or we can leave it and just approve as after further discussion of the general <coughs> capital budget, which would cover all of this as well. Uh, Mr. Hissick? Uh, one option that we have considered is possibly deferring the bike storage to 2021 where it would better align with the construction of the new bike path, but it's, that's just a potential if you're looking for something to uh, defer. Thank you. I'll move approval of the um, tax-funded general capital. Second. Second. Any further discussion? I'll call the question all those in favor. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, I'll move approval of the um, amenity reserve funded uh, capital. Second. Any further, any discussion? I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. I'll move approval of the land sale reserve funded capital. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so if we could stay with the capital budget because we haven't yet approved the capital, the general capital, the remaining parts of the general capital budget. Um, I'll move approval here. of the general capital budget. Second. Any discussion? I have. Um, For the questions, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Okay, so I have a question, uh, Mr. Hissick. Where does uh, SIP funding for 2020 fall within the budget? That is part of the Economic Development Fund, uh, which is a $100,000 budget. But that's one item, line item within that budget. So um, if it's not particularly approved uh, that money will just sit in the economic development fund unless removed okay so a previous meeting you did have a slide for the economic development fund might that be available Um, slide number five. Yeah. Okay. okay, so two aspects. Uh, one is uh, we have the SIP funding and we have the unallocated funding of 33308. Uh, so the other commitments have, um, have been made. Uh, so those are the only two items for 
discussion. Councillor Wainwright. Okay, so um, I don't think we should leave that 33,000 sitting there unallocated. Um, it, uh, and, and, you know, we've talked about a lot of potential cuts, um, but here we have $33,000 and we have no intended purpose. So uh, I, th I think it's reasonable to reduce that. Um, I would be personally comfortable with um, removing that 33,308, but I would also be um, willing to compromise and only remove a portion of that. So to get the ball rolling, I'll move that we reduce the economic development fund by $33,308. Seconder, discussion? Uh, for reasons that I, uh, I'll speak, uh, for reasons that I gave uh, last meeting, I'm in favor of, of doing that. It's the only portion of our budget that, that uh, remains uh, unallocated, uh, Council Henry. So the only thing that I'm at all hesitant about is that um, staff have told us twice, you know, in, e in each presentation they've had a slide saying, don't cut the operating budget. They're um, anticipating a certain amount of surplus, and if we start cutting the operating budget, that surplus might not be there, and things may have to get reconsidered. So I'd actually be interested in staff's opinion <coughs> of how much damage we, might we potentially be doing <laughs> to your budgeting if we cut that 33,308. Councillor, I, I deeply appreciate the sentiment, <laughs> but I think because uh, it is unallocated, I think uh, we can ignore that uh, caveat for this one. Okay, However, I'd be just a little more comfortable if we made it 30,000 even and left a few dollars there for things that might arise. Okay. Uh, Councillor Rintoul. If I may, uh, through the mayor to Councillor Wainwright, would I, is it fair that I should anticipate then some some other motions coming with respect to utilizing that potentially thirty thousand dollars? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, Councillor O'Keefe. Thank you. Um, first, a, a question uh, through you to, to staff: Where do grants and aid get funded? Are they funded out of this or something else? They have their own separate budget. Okay, so that's already somewhere in, in the operations budget. It is, however, in the last few years, we have used an allocation uh, from this fund to fund uh, additional requests that had a bit of an economic development um, focus. So by reducing it entirely, we'd be losing that flexibility. So, thank you. So I, I do like the idea of having a small amount in there anyways to um, deal with other things that that might come up either from the new economic advisory uh, committee or other things like you know the, the folk and fiddle sort of appeared out of nowhere last year and um, being able to to have a little bit of something to help uh, support new initiatives that that might come come forward so you know something like Five five thousand dollars, perhaps, to uh, to deal with th those sorts of things is something I would be interested in. <clears throat> if you wish to make a, an amendment, um, that would be appropriate. If not, um, is, there, is there future other discussion? Oh, okay. Can I clarify? Was oh. the amount amended based on Mr. Hissick's recommendation down to thirty thousand even? Uh, we just no, have a motion. but I'm okay. I'm certainly open to that. So uh, I'll make a motion that uh, we, we keep $5,000 as unallocated in the Economic Development Fund. Second. Discussion? I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion, one opposed, motion carries. So then we have the main motion. Any further discussion on the main motion? 
So this would be, we're going to reduce the economic development fund by 28,380. All those in favor? Motion carries unanimous, thank you. Okay. Councilor Ennett? Um, so the other thing that uh, is on the list uh, that staff are looking for some direction on is SIP funding for 2020. And I'll comment that um, my understanding is we're now below Mr. Hizek's 1.96%. Is that correct? 1.79. Okay, thank you. So um, I know there are mixed views about SIP and um, I confess to um, being reluctant to continue with, the, with uh, putting the money towards SIP. I can think of better things that we can uh, potentially put it towards. Um, 2020's already started and you know, obviously we're, we've been in SIP for a bit and I don't think we can reasonably just say, as of today, we're out. Um, that doesn't give them an orderly transition. But I can see us um, saying we're out at the end of June. And that would be to cut the SIP funding by 50%, which would be $13,361. So I'll move that. Discussion? Uh, Councillor Duncan and Councillor Garnett. Um, given that we've made it beneath the target that we'd had before for reduction, and I, I get the ambiguity about SIP when we look at their balance sheets and how much money they have, um, this amount is substantial for our town. On the other hand, since having this amount was part of their budgets and they've got some really great projects going forward this year, I would... I don't want to in any way jeopardize that, so I prefer to just continue that funding for that additional six months, close out the 2020, and then discuss it from there, so. Councillor Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm in agreement with Councillor Wainwright. I, I, this one I've kind of struggled with because I, I've listened to the, a couple of presentations now, and, and although I do think they do good work, I. I'm struggling to find out what direct benefit Sydney's gained from it, and they haven't actually spoken to that specific thing, which is causes me concern. So that's kind of where I'm on on the fence about keeping the funding for them open. And so I, I, I think the compromise that Councillor Wainwright has suggested is something I can stand behind. Thank you. Councillor Rookie. So I'm in favor of keeping the SIP funding um, for a couple of reasons. So when I was at UPCM in, in the fall and I went around to a number of different economic development workshops. And one of the things that I heard over and over again was the importance of taking a more regional approach to economic development. And yes, it's hard to see sometimes about how something in Victoria has impact here, but the message is clear, is that th there's always some sort of, of spin-offs in that sort of um, regional economic uh, development and planning. Um, and it's happening a lot in other places around the province, in the interior, um, the Okanagan, so different towns or regions banding together to market um, their, their region of, of, of the, the province. So from that perspective, I think it's a good thing. Um, have we got as much out of SIP as we could have? Um, no, we haven't. But I think part of that is, um, is you know, got to be on us as a council because I think if we were to, uh, once we get the opportunity to think about what we want to do in our town in terms of economic development or economic vibrancy, whatever you want to call it, um, then we're in a better position to leverage SIP. I mean, SIP has offered to come and talk to us to help us through that process. Uh, to help us start develop some sort of strategy in terms of what we want to do to make our economy more vibrant. So I think there's potential there for us to leverage SIP, but we haven't had the opportunity to do that. I'm hopeful that with our new newly constituted economic advisory committee and maybe uh, as we move forward throughout the year to start 
putting a bit more uh, meat on the bones of some sort of economics strategy for the town, um, then I think we're in a better position to, to leverage what SIP has to offer. So I'm okay with leaving it there for now. I'll, uh, I'll make some comments. Um, I'm opposed to, uh, to reducing uh, our commitment to SIP. I think we should continue it through uh, 2020. In fact, I think we should continue it long beyond. Um, there, were, uh, there were many positive comments from, from uh, my colleagues during the presentation. Um, and I think uh, one of the things we're missing is it's $27,000 out of a $33 million budget. Um, and we participate in a regional economy. Uh, the economy does not really know municipal boundaries. We have 410,000 residents in the Capital Regional District or in the South Island. We have uh, some 850 business licenses in Sydney. The majority of those business licenses uh, do business-to-business -business relationships with businesses outside the Sydney area. The majority of residents in Sydney who are employed work outside of Sydney. So the benefits that SIP brings to employers around the region actually benefits Sydney residents who are employed in those, uh, those economic sectors. This is a unique partnership as, as was brought forward with uh, 10 municipalities, um, nine uh, Coast Salish uh, First Nations. Um, I, would, uh, I would suggest that the Coast Salish Nations are impressed that the local governments have agreed to be a part of SIP and they are seeing tremendous benefit in terms of being part of SIP themselves and we heard very positive comments about some of the initiatives that would involve the four Wasanish nations uh, on the peninsula. There are three post-secondary in institutions, seven industry and nonprofit groups and over 20 private sector groups. We also heard that uh, economic development associations uh, across, the, uh, across the country are primarily funded from municipal sources. Our funding is a very small portion of the total funding. With regards to the comment uh, brought up with regards to their current cash position of some 300, uh, in excess of $300,000 in, in cash, um, that is committed, um, uh, much of that is committed to future projects that they will be enrolling uh, this year and beyond. Um, that's merely a statement of their financial position. It's not a comment that they're cash rich or a wash in cash. Uh, $300,000 doesn't go a long way to an economy, to economic development in an economy the size of, uh, of, uh, of Greater Victoria. So I think um, it's a unique structure. A Souk uh, Council voted unanimously last Monday uh, to be the 11th municipality to, um, to, to support SIP uh, in 2020. And I think it would be, um, uh, I think it would be a, grave, uh, a grave mistake to, uh, to withdraw from a regional initiative. And I think it would be looked up upon unfavorably uh, by others uh, in, the, uh, in the Capital Regional District and, uh, and possibly our, our Coast Salish First Nations. Uh, Councillor O'Keefe and Councillor O'Toole. Uh, just one more thing uh, that may be of interest to Council members is that the um, Sandwich Peninsula Chamber of Commerce at their last board meeting um, agreed to become, uh, I can't remember what the associate members of SIP. So one of the things that SIP has decided to do is provide a forum for all of the different chambers of commerce in the region to, to get together, uh, collaborate um, on different initiatives, that sort of thing. So I think, um, you know, our chamber of support commerce, our business people support this. So I think that's another reason to continue to support it as well. Any further discussions? So we have a motion on the floor, uh, Councillor Wainwright. Uh, thank you. So um, I, I guess the concerns I've had about SIP were when they initially made their presentation to Sydney looking for funding for us to join, they actually told us that in three years' time, here are the following metrics that we should evaluate them on and that they would demonstrate their performance relative to those metrics before they came and asked for renewal of the funding. And I still have a copy of that PowerPoint from back in the day. That was the previous council. And every year they have come back, they have not reported on those metrics. This year, for the first time, they actually gave us some metrics. 
but they weren't the ones they promised that we should evaluate them on. And for a business organization, I just found that troubling. Um, and, you know, we are being quite firm about looking for metrics from some of our organizations. And it just isn't, it, it doesn't inspire confidence to, to me that they made a pitch like that and they don't talk about it. It may be that one of those metrics isn't appropriate to evaluate them on after all, but they're not giving us any kind of argument that it's the wrong metrics. They're simply ignoring those things. So I have some issue with that. As far as the feedback from, um, from uh, economic organizations and such, I have not been hearing any positive feedback from any of our uh, peninsula industry about the organization. So uh, that's, um, I mean, maybe it's uh, the people who are enthusiastic about it don't want to talk to me, always possible. But um, I'm just, uh, after several years, I'm concerned that um, I'm not seeing the value. And, you know, I, I have no doubt that um, they're doing some worthwhile things, but we have a lot of organizations uh, that are competing for support. Uh, some of them, like the museum, have economic spin-off benefits, and you know we put money towards those things. We can't support everything, and, and as I say, the issue I've had with SIP is one of. Um, uh, reporting and performance relative to what they said they were going to do. So that, that is my issue. Councilor Rintoul. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I would concur with respect to reporting that, uh, that you know, what we receive tends to be, you know, glossy and shiny and uh, maybe lacking in some specific uh, details around uh, where they're spending their money. and. and you know, we had to ask for that to be included after their presentation to take a look at that. Uh, having said that, um, you know, I concur with the mayor, $300,000 isn't uh, a lot of money. They seem to be reaching a critical mass in terms of their membership. That is one of the metrics I know we, we asked to see previously was, uh, how's their membership gonna grow? Where is it gonna grow? Is it through corporate partners? Is it through uh, municipal governments? Where? And they have shown um, some success in, in that area. And so uh, while I remain skeptical, um, you know, I think we're, we're talking about uh, an additional one year of uh, funding here, this commitment in 2020. And uh, the amended uh, motion, uh, I won't support, but I will support the original motion uh, with an eye to look to SIP to uh, improve upon uh, their reporting to the town of Sydney and, and their other members. Thank you. Other discussion? Um, to Council Wainwright's point, I think uh, I think some of those metrics were addressed, and the major the organization has changed substantially, uh, and I think uh, I think they've provided uh, good information, and I think the reports that are available on their site and the the reports that we've received uh, demonstrate that they are having an impact on our region's economy, which will include Sydney businesses and Sydney residents. Um, and again, I think we need to look beyond Sydney's borders and uh, participate in a regional organization. Um, if we were one municipality, uh, there would be an economic organization, a regional economic organization much larger than, uh, much larger than SIP. And um, I'll ask if there's any further discussion. And seeing none, is we're calling the question on whether to reduce the funding to six months. All those in favor? Opposed? Five opposed, the motion is defeated. I think staff are looking for a motion um, for the SIP funding for 2020. So yep. if it's not going to be cut, somebody should make a motion to approve it as presented. Motion. So moved. Further, further, okay. further discussion, I'll call the question. Those in favor? Opposed? We have two opposed, the motion carries. Thank you. 
So, Mr. Hissick, I think what we have remaining is the uh, general operating uh, budget. The remainder of the general operating. Yes, if council would like to discuss any other aspect of the general operating budget, now would be the time. Okay, so that begins on page uh, page ten. I do have one question through to staff, um, uh, through to our fire chief. Um, we have fire investigation slash prevention uh, increasing substantially in 2020. Um, could perhaps have a, a brief description of that. Yes, uh, to the mayor, that's basically taking one uh, staff member out of suppression and re reallocating him to the prevention division just to more accurately reflect his, his duties. So you'll see a, oh, okay. a similar deduction uh, under the fire force of about approximately $77,000. So that's that's the give and the take. Oh, under the tri uh, Correct. Compliant. Okay, Correct. I see that. Thank you for that, I appreciate it. Um, I have no additional questions. Are there any other additional questions on general operating, Councilor Williams? Uh, to get it on the floor, I'll uh, move that we approve the uh, budget as amended. Second. Any further discussion? General operating budget is amended. Yep. All those in favor? Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much, Council, for another great round of deliberations uh, just to let you know we have reduced the impact on the average residents by $18 from the draft budget at $18 a year which you know it's we went in at 45 we're at 27 now that's that's a fairly significant reduction in terms of percent and we reduced the business the impact on the average business by $69 for the year which again is percentage wise is fairly hefty so what follows from here is that uh, we'll prepare the financial plan bylaw, which you'll uh, see sometime in April, once the, the final assessments are received in late March. And that will be followed by the tax rates bylaw that sets the, the, the rates for the year, which will support uh, the revenue we need for our budget. And with that, um, we all thank you. Could I um, just get confirmation? Our final general increase number 1.76, did you say? 1.79? It's 1.79. 1.79, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hissick, and, uh, and I want to extend uh, thanks to um, uh, to staff, uh, Mr. Humble spoke earlier this evening and uh, and, and spoke about uh, an informed council. Uh, and I think uh, we have a lot to be grateful for uh, for staff in the preparation of the budget, the entire team uh, under Mr. Humble and Mr. Hissick. Uh, the information was, uh, I believe, uh, more comprehensive uh, received by council than I have seen before. Uh, and that's in gr uh, on behalf of my colleagues. That's greatly appreciated. Uh, and I think uh, I want to thank the public for uh, for their uh, comments and input into uh, into our budget process, not only in the council chamber, but uh, I know I had a number of conversations uh, outside the council chambers uh, in the community. And uh, lastly, I'd like to, to thank my uh, my colleagues for their due diligence uh, through our three meetings. Uh, we certainly went beyond and and ask uh, asked a lot of questions of staff on many aspects of the budget. Uh, if we had brought all of those questions forward in our deliberations, we would have been here over, over many evenings. And uh, while we did spend uh, quite a bit of time on some this evening, I think uh, overall our deliberations were, uh, were exceptional and, and thank you to colleagues. So again, thank you uh, to all and uh, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Motion carries, thank you.